Maybe she has a vaccine. Maybe she has a cure. Maybe I can stop working in a quarantine tent that's lined with claymores and C4. You're a humanitarian, and I'm not sure you can afford to be. You have a better option on the table? Because we're barely containing this. And I hope you have a solution that doesn't involve a nuclear response. I heard the talk. Okay. Let's try it your way. Let's extract Dr. McIntosh and pray to God she's got answers we can use. Merci. We only saw three, but, uh, but Mac went against the Grunt, the Breacher, and the Rooter, but we also have the Apex and the Smasher. And Let's see what's happening. And you have those swarm of enemy closing the distance with you, totally disrupting your usual tactics in Siege, plus your three uh, players only to take care of that. Uh, so it was really interesting to the point to the visual identity where we, we've done a prototype like by basically, okay, Let's see if that works. We push the behavior of our infected to a white mask, the whole tolerant white mask. And we push the animation with that. And man, it was insane. The fantasy was there. It was working. You were having those creatures breaching your, their walls with their bare hand and closing to your position. And, and it actually worked. It actually performed well. And it was fun to play. And here we, we, we were taking a look at the the grunt, the sort of basic monster that you're going to be interacting with a lot, right? Yeah, grunt and breacher, you will encounter them a lot in your level. And the grunt is that kind of human silhouette wandering in the levels. He basically don't care about you at the beginning when he's unaware of your presence. So he's kind of weak. You can take him down, you can put a bullet through his head. Uh, he will fall down easily until you point that flashlight of yours in their face. Complaints on Reddit like, uh, where is Termite? Why can I play Termite? Yes, you will encounter plenty of Termite. They are very mobile, very agile, and except that they explode in your face, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's a very uh, mobile explosive unit. Uh, they will try to open a way for their allies uh, to your position, and um, they will disrupt your group. You will force to avoid being too close from each other. And, but on top of that, you can use them uh, as a bomb in the midst of your enemies to try to split them or kill them. So a little bit of strategy there, and we, as we saw in the demo, the Breacher was bursting through reinforced walls, making those openings for the grunts to rush in and attack Tachanka on the turret, or even Buck on the turret when you were playing. Now, Mac, uh, we have three. Uh, she's a very fast and agile uh, support unit. She will teleport uh, as first, at first to try to stay afar from your team and crowd control you. She will root a player in your team, forcing him to stay a bit immobile at first. And then, if you damage her enough, if you annoy the lady enough, she will teleport to your position into a bloodless state to finish the job. So she has quite a few things going on here. A crowd control area effect that can stop all the players in, in, their, in their tracks and then she can also teleport, and then also has a bloodless mode. So she's definitely a, 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 a monster that you need to take out quick, and Mac's team did take out quick work of that, uh, that rooter when she came around. In Montagne and Sledge, he has the armor of Montagne, does that mean you can shoot as much as you want in uh, his front armor? It will just get him angry. And then you think you're uh, safe behind your wall, and no, you don't. He will breach through to take you down. It's a very beast-like, arcade-like uh, creature. It has that feeling like, uh, like the whole game. You read this button kind of easily. It's very strong, but have a weak, has a weak point, and you have to find it and find a strategy around it to take him down. So he does have a weak point. We're not going to spoil that for everyone. You're going to have to find out when, uh, what that weak, weak point is when you play either on the, the test. chain. It's a leader, and as every good leader, he will try to stay as far as possible from the action. He will try to get as far from you as possible and shoot you that kind of uh, eco beam. If you get in him, you get disrupt, you will lose your scope view, etc., etc. But if it wasn't enough, he will try to spawn a buffer of enemy, of basic enemy, between you and him. 
And those enemies are not the normal one. They are not weak. They will close their way through you faster, and they will be more resistant to your bullets. So not only is the Apex going to be shooting echo drone-like concussion bolts at your face, but he's spawning harder to defeat enemies and just rushing at you over and over again. That's a crazy design, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't see it in the demo, but the players, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see how they're going to tackle the Apex. Now, Mac, we did see the Rooter spawn up in a few of these, and these Evos will, as you were mentioning before, they spawn during the events. Why, you know, explain to us... Resort is uh, a hot springs resort. In truth or consequence, is New Mexico, and uh, what happens is it is now the heart of the nest of the um, of the parasite. This is where its archetypes come out. This is where it evolves to counter what you throw at it. Absolutely, and Mac, how does this play as a map? Well, a resort is the map that we want to play as a homage to our siege maps in the sense that it starts very much like you would do in a disarm the bomb scenario. But this time, we're twisting it so you actually have to go and plant bombs. And once you're done, it's not finished. You actually have to go through the city of truth of consequences and a very outdoor environment. And those objectives are integrated into the map, into the game with a little bit of more story, a little bit more uh, storytelling. An intense map, because what happens is you've got Dr. McIntosh. She was there when the outbreak first started happening. She worked with the CDC teams. She's managed to remain uninfected. And if there's anybody that has any information, it's her but she's trapped in the hospital. Obviously, we saw a lot of uh, this doctor in some of the teaser yeah. uh, assets that were released uh, leading up to Outbreak. Mac, how does that map play? Well, as you saw in the demo, uh, this is a map where we took the CQB to the next level. Uh, it's very close quarter. You have to go through those corridors. very difficult. And also, it's where we expanded on the concept of uh, hostage rescue, and we took it to the next level where it takes time to get to the hostage, and once you got her, it's not done. You actually have to do stuff before you're able to exfiltrate on the, on the rooftop. And finally, we the have... Junkyard, the nest uh, is essentially where the capsule is located, and that is what you're going to be going after. It's, um, it's at the heart of all of this. So you take this down, you may be able to finally fight all of this and stop the infection. Mac, I imagine there's going to be a lot of monsters here in the junkyard. Oh, absolutely. This is the heart of the nest. So you can see the environment is very parasited. It feels out of this world. And it's time to take off the training wheels. You're there to blow stuff up. <laughs> blow stuff up in junkyard. Maybe plant that to chank a turret and just unleash hell. Absolutely. I'm just Ab trying to figure out when were the training wheels on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Now, Irvin, you're going to be playing on these larger maps with more monsters, more oh, difficult streamers. This guy is there, over there. Uh, you play normal. Uh, if you want to enjoy the real experience of Footbreak, of course you play in pandemic. In game, they can be used in both uh, PvP and PvE, of course. And uh, they're kind of glowing, and there's going to be one per week, actually. And, uh, and there, there is, is even going to be one leading up to the launch of Outbreak. So these are going to be exclusive for beating pandemic mode in the game, which is really going to be kind of a cool reward once you receive those. And uh, the Ash Elite skin will be available in that. So on top of the free one that you're going to be able to get from, the, uh, from playing the game, for playing one game before uh, March 6th, you're also going to be able to get uh, an Ash Elite skin that has a different variation. You're also going to be able to get everything from weapon charms to weapon skins to full BDU body dress units with headgear and charms all within the Outbreak packs. And of course, if you play Outbreak during when it's live, you will get four free Outbreak packs, and uh, they will be available in-game for our six credits. And this is something that we're going to be tying in. Right. There, there's obviously a little bit of storyline here that ties in the operators to the Outbreak packs. Right, and that's what you're going to be seeing more of, is we're going to use every opportunity and every little thing that we can in order to tie in whatever we release into the lore, into the operators. We want there to be a closer connection between all of the stuff that you see, that you pick up. We want it to resonate with you so that if a player puts on something, they understand where it fits in that character lore or why it's important.